I just got a new type of Stirling engine today and it's kind of interesting. Uh, it's got this propeller on it and I'm kind of guessing it's not going to develop enough power to actually uh, move something. I guess it can move a boat or something, a model boat on still water and still air. But anyway, that's just my first guess. I haven't run it yet. Uh, not much of a walk around to do on this one. It's got the typical burner right here. And what else? It's got the, I'll move that off to the side. Uh, yeah, it's got a dual piston arrangement in here. And when I rotate this, you can see the inner piston moving. Yeah, there we go, get a little bit of light off, but you can see the inner piston moving back and forth. You can see there's a seal here and a seal here. And then there's another, there's a second glass envelope inside there. So, yeah, it's got cooling fins here. It's got a tube that comes off the bottom right there and goes into this column. And on the bottom, there's nothing but a screw. So I thought there might be a hole on the bottom, but there's not. There's some holes. There's a hole right there, hole right there. So this one's still a mystery to me, how it works. Um, yeah, so uh, they all work by transporting heat from one location to another. And I guess that's all we can say about it right now. The next step is to go put some fire in it and see what it does for us. Let's zoom in here and do some highlights from their instructions. These are not mine, these are theirs. So let's see what they say. Uh, put the stern of the engine in a horizontal position. Move the flywheel to ensure whether it moves smoothly. If it does not move smoothly, check the connecting rod works well or not. Besides, check the cylinder block whether it has oil stains or dust. If we're with oil stains, so clean it, uh, moving the flywheel. You should feel some resistance. That's normal because of the leak proofness of the cylinder block. Okay, put the cotton wick in the, in the lamp. Uh, use 95% purity alcohol. It doesn't say what type. Then uh, put the alcohol lamp into the alcohol lamp pedestal. Okay. Uh, turn on the lamp for two minutes. Wow, it takes two minutes to preheat. And then start flipping the flywheel. Okay, that's the propeller. I'm wondering how the uh, propeller is going to affect the, uh, the burner at the back. Because if it starts blowing, that flame is going to move out from underneath there. Okay, so onward. Um, they talk about the LED and the generator, but this model doesn't have that. So let's move on down to what we do have. Procedure of ending operation. Cool Stirling engine completely. Uh, keep out of the reach of children. Uh, children should only use it under adult supervision. <laughs> Matters needing attention. So these, I guess, are cautions. Uh, don't touch the heated cylinder and link metal to be free from scald. Okay, I don't want to be scald. Uh, do not touch the alcohol lamp that burns for a long time to avoid scald. Product is suitable for children over 8 and children under 8 if they are parental supervision. Yeah, that's their advice, not mine. Do not touch the cotton thread of the alcohol lamp. Uh, when the wick burns, it produces water. If the water mow, mow it, the heated tube, the tube will crack. Oh, I see. So you're not supposed to touch the uh, tube with the wick of the of the uh, alcohol lamp. Okay. So leave the alcohol lamp alone until it cools down. Both ends of the connecting rod shall be lubricated regularly. Now that's interesting. Okay, so that means that this won't run continuously because they're saying that this and that need to be lubricated occasionally. Okay, let's see. It says don't fill the engine with oil. <laughs> okay, we won't do that. Um, it's not just a toy. It contains a lot of physics worthy of deep explore, exploration for friends who love science research. In today's energy crisis, we hope that more friends who love science will discuss Sterling Engine's future road with us. Um, 
This is an external combustion engine, continuous fuel combustion, expansion of air, hydrogen, or helium gas as a medium. Probably not in this engine, no. Uh, to make piston movement, expansion of gas in cold in the cold cooling, cold chamber cooling, repeated like this. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. To make it run fast and powerful, all it needs is a small alcohol lamp. Okay, I will see about that. Uh, but external combustion engine is kind of closed cycle reciprocating piston type thermal engine with external combustion which is different from an internal combustion engine yes that's true so because the internal combustion engine gets power by burning fuel inside the engine um, so this one the fuel is continuously burned in the combustion chamber outside the cylinder and transmitted to the working medium through heating you know, okay uh, the working medium does not directly participate in the combustion and needn't something change. There's a mess up in the typing. Because the external combustion engine avoids the problems of knocking power of traditional internal combustion engine, yeah, quality of fuel, it achieves high efficiency, low noise, low pollution, and low operating cost. Meh. Yeah, it depends on the model. I'm not sure this one qualifies for a couple of those. External gas turbine, wow, I didn't realize this was an external gas turbine, can burn all kinds of combustible gas, natural gas, biogas, LPG, hydrogen, and so on. It also burns liquid fuels such as diesel, liquefied petroleum gas, wood, and solar energy, as long as the thermal cavity reaches 700 degrees Celsius. Wow, that is kind of warm. Uh, the equipment can do power operation. The lower the ambient temperature, okay, the higher the electric power generation efficiency. Uh, my wife won't let me put this in the refrigerator or we would do that. The biggest advantage of external gas turbine is that its output and efficiency are not affected by altitude. So it's very suitable for high altitude areas. So I can make a, a model aircraft and fly it to the stratosphere. Okay, um, yeah, that's it for the instructions. Well, let's make this thing happen. Got a flame, it's hard to see. I don't know if that's easier to see with my hand there or not. A little bit of crackling. I already saw the propeller move. The propeller's starting to turn. I wonder if it'll turn equally well both ways. I'm on the back porch, so I can get a draft through here. Oh, well, that didn't take two minutes. I've got I've got it turning so that it is blowing towards me, towards my hand up here. Um, yeah, it's not going to like the wind blowing the flame around. Okay, before I forget. Yeah, I don't, I'm not going to call that high power. I'm going to see if it turns the other way. If it turns both ways. Nope. I'm saying it's going to go one direction. Nope. It likes to blow away. Nope. Started to... Actually, that's interesting. Started the opposite way. Feels like something is loose. cycling because the flame is getting more and less uh, directly in contact with the tube. That was weird. It seems to stall every once in a while. At this speed, I don't really want to get whacked with a propeller because it seems to be 
moving pretty significantly. Ooh, that's not heating up. I don't know about you, but I'm not sure I'd want this on my airplane. <laughs> it uh, speeds up and slows down by itself. If I can shield the flame, that helps a lot. You can see that helps a lot. Also, it seems to be that the engine is reaching a maximum temperature, maximum speed, and yeah, it's not dissipating the heat fast enough. So the engine heats up, reaches a maximum temperature, it can't dissipate that any faster than it is, and then it slows down. not producing gale force winds out the front. Nope. Oh, there's a problem. Is when it's clattering around, Apparently it's producing a lot of friction inside. I've exhausted about a third of the uh, fuel. Turn this around so you can still see what's going on. That's it from a little different angle. And turn it this way. Yeah, a little bit erratic for uh, any airplane I'd want to be flying. Here we go again. <laughs> it is producing enough of a breeze I can feel it on my chest through my shirt. You may be hearing it on the microphone. And now it's just going back and forth. It's not even rotating all the way around. Oh, now it's going the opposite direction. Oh, that's interesting. It stopped in reverse direction, so now the air is blowing backwards. Um, that doesn't really help a lot with the uh, heat transfer to the cylinder. But I guess this pipe right here is blocking enough of the wind that it's not... Uh, We'll see if it likes to operate this direction better because maybe it needs the extra cooling from the fan to actually uh, operate continuously. It's not running as fast as it did the other direction. It's not reaching a maximum speed, but it seems to be more consistent. we answered the question, yes, it will run well in both directions. Okay, 
Okay. It's decided to go to idle speed. And yeah, if you've seen my other videos on the Sterling engine, a little even a little draft makes a huge difference in the heat transfer and, and the speed of the engine. So in the past I've tried putting bricks around them and so on. I had one engine that wouldn't operate at all unless I just completely blocked any air uh, airflow around it to keep the uh, flame from flickering. I guess it required 100% of the heat from the flame. This one seems to be, doesn't obviously doesn't require all of the flame because half the time the flame's not even underneath the cylinder. Well, we're getting low on fuel, so I think I'm going to blow it out. And because I don't want the wick to burn off. If you burn the fuel too low, then the wick starts burning, and then you got to go out and get a new wick. Seems like it's going to run a little bit after the after the flame goes out. Now it's just oscillating back and forth. And I think that's it. Okay, well, uh, an interesting type of Sterling engine, and I will have to study it and make another video on how I think this one works. Hope you found that useful and interesting in your Sterling engine explorations.